If, now, let me back up. If you've ever watched a fail video of some kind, hey, your tires are mounted backwards, hopping off or quickly getting out of the way instead of being crushed by it as it rolls over. I hate this one. I hate even knowing this is in here and I don't know if I can follow the rules. But I still found it interesting because it is the opposite of what I do. Pretty cool, huh? Do you think your manual is boring? That you can't learn anything from it? You think they make these things just for fun? There's actually some pretty good stuff in here, okay? If you got nothing better to do with your life, you can sit here and read through the whole thing. That's a boatload of fun, right? Well, I'm not gonna say I sat here and did that, but I did spend quite a bit of time recently because I was going through and came across something that I thought was kind of cool. It answered a question from a long time ago. So then I got to look and then I found all sorts of other pretty cool stuff in there too. You know, the things that are buried in there. When you're going through a manual looking for how to fix this or what this knob or control means, you're not really going through front to back and kind of you're just skimming, you know, you're just going through getting the information that you want. Well, guess what? There's some things that stood out to me that they maybe will stick out to you as well. If you've seen these things on tractors, the setup, whatever it might be, or maybe you can do it on your tractor, get some more versatility or capability or stability or anything else that ends in illity out of it, okay? So I promise we're gonna keep this fun, we're gonna keep it quick, we're gonna keep it simple. Let's get to it. If you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button right underneath the video. Make sure you read through the description as well. A lot of good links to attachments or accessories, places to get a discount, 5% off discount code GWT. Go to goodworkstractors.com as well. I sell tractors, I sell attachments, all sorts of good stuff. This is just me, the cool things that I found in the manual. If you know of something pretty cool in your manual, because it could be specific just to the model of tractor that you have, make sure you leave a comment below, okay? Make sure to check those out as well. It makes it a lot of fun. Thanks so much, guys. Okay, so this one is a little unique. I have intentionally got an X-Series garden tractor and a 1-Series 1025 X738 side-by-side -side right here, okay? Two different procedures, and you know what? This has come up before uh, several times, actually, when you're engaging a PTO, okay? So pay attention, because the different series are going to have different instructions. So to turn your PTO on, you need John Deere 1025R. Let's see what it says. Set engine speed to 1500 RPMs or less, okay? Lower than that, if anything. And then turn your PTO on. How is that gonna compare to a John Deere X738 garden tractor? This is totally different, okay? So after your engine has warmed up, move the throttle lever to the maximum engine speed and then pull your PTO knob and turn it on, okay? So totally different depending on what machine you have, what series you have. So never assume it's the same for every machine. Always check your manual. Good information to know, right? Can anybody tell me what the difference is though between one machine versus another? Does it have anything to do with it being gas versus diesel? Could that come into play at all? Or is there something else going on? Okay, courtesy of our 4R series manual right here, okay, this is a 4066 tractor right here, but I think this applies to a lot of machines. It's not just this one. It's just where I happen to find it at, but take a look at these front tires, okay? So let me just read it really quick here. Front tire rolling direction. Under most conditions, tires should be installed with a directional arrow pointing in the direction of travel. There's going to be on most of these tires an arrow that actually points forward, okay? So that's the direction of the tread. However, Hold on now, okay? If machine is mainly used for loader operations, lug direction, lugs, okay? These bad boys right here may be reversed to increase tire life and improve traction while backing out of dirt piles. Intriguing, isn't that, okay? And you know what? I've never seen that in a manual before, and sure, maybe that's just me, but I've had quite a few tractors come in with the, uh, the tires mounted in the opposite position here. So you would take this tire, put it on that side, and flip flat one over and put it here, okay? but I've had them like that before. You know, I've kind of wondered, I've kind of hypothesized, actually thought that before and had folks say, hey, your tires are mounted backwards. Well, turns out there's actually a legitimate reason to do so. Wheels must be installed so that the valve stem is facing outwards. All right, keep that in mind, but very interesting tidbit of information there. If you're doing a lot of loader operation, perhaps that's a setup you want to look into. Okay, so this is one you definitely want to know before you get into that situation, so pay attention. Okay, so I want you to pay close attention to this picture right here. Can you see that picture okay? Notice how the front wheels are up in the air, the rear ones are here, but it appears to be tipping back. Now pay attention. You see this chain right here? Could be a chain, could be a cart, could be a wagon, whatever it is. But imagine you're stuck in mud right here, okay? 
you get these if, now let me back up if you've ever watched a fail video of some kind where you see a tractor online and it is just tipped right back up over you know maybe in a uh, a pulling contest even or you know some guys have a a wagon loaded down with brick or wood or whatever it is and it's just in swampy muddy areas and things like that or it might not even be it might not be on a hard surface like this too but at a certain point you got to be very careful if you're stuck and you're just sitting there spinning because what could happen and this is right in the manual okay freeing a mired machine all right never drive forward okay because if it's trying to get traction at a certain point the rear tires could lock up it could end up flipping the front end up and you go tumbling over backwards you don't want that to happen so let me read this to you Attempting to free a mired machine can involve safety hazards such as the mired tractor tipping rearward, the towing tractor overturning, or the tow chain and tow bar failing and recoiling from its stretch condition. Back your tractor out if it gets mired down in mud. Unhitch any towed implements and get them out of the way. Dig the mud out from behind the rear wheels, put boards down there, you get the point. I'm just telling you, this is a big safety thing. Never really even crossed my mind, but it's something you definitely want to know before you get into that situation. So this one is pretty sweet, really pretty simple and straightforward, but I found it pretty interesting all the same, okay? Every six years or 6,000 hours, okay? So for most of us, never, <laughs> if we're being honest, never, never gonna do it, never gonna have to. If coolant is checked annually, the service interval can be extended to six years, 6,000 hours, flush and replace at that point. <laughs> Now, I don't know about you, but I find that to be pretty incredible. And the same thing can be said for vehicles, you know, trucks and, and all sorts of other machines too. But these service intervals are extending further and further. Even regular engine oil changes, you know, are every 200 hours in these. So I just find it pretty incredible. They're quite low maintenance and it's moving into the lower and lower maintenance key. There's certain things you want to do. I want to make sure you know about that. And so while some of these can be delayed for as long as you possibly want, others like the one I'm going to tell you about now need to be done on a very regular basis. Like my dad always used to say, I'm hard on you because I love you, okay? So I'm not going to stop telling you about this lube shuttle. Grease, okay? The most important way to protect your machine. Why? Because it's the one thing they have to do most often on your machine. Keep it greased, okay? And if you have an easy way to do that, not dealing with one of those traditional grease guns that leak all over the place, you can see it right here. What's it say? Rethink greasing. No plunger to pull back, no air gaps, no leaking grease, no wasted grease, no wasted time. You've got the steel cover on the top there. You undo that, you take it off, that's just to protect it, you know, and you got grease tubes here, all right? You can see there's no, there's no grease leaking out there, there's no mess here at all. You just take it off and you need to replace it. You can even refill these things if you want, but you get 5% off discount code GWT. I'm telling you, grease is your friend, okay? So uh, put it on there, take care of it, go to the description below in the video or go to my website, you'll see where you can buy this stuff, get 5% off discount code GWT. Okay, seriously, another important safety tip here. Kind of crazy, I'm telling you. You just never would think about this kind of thing. We're talking about the ROPS, okay? You got it in a folded position right here. Now, what does the manual tell you if you have it in a folded position? Say you need to go underneath a tree, something else like that, into a building, whatever else it might be. Well, it's gonna tell you, get that ROPS back up into the fully upright position as soon as possible. But while you have it lowered, you do not want to have your seatbelt on, okay? Do not use a seatbelt with the ROPS folded according to your manual. Always reference your own manual in case it tells you something different. But what happens if your ROPS is in the fully up position? Well, as you might imagine, you want to have your seatbelt on if the ROPS is in the up position, okay? So again, you want to keep this up just as much as you possibly can. And if so, keep your seatbelt on. If you have it down, take it off. So kind of my hypothesis behind that it doesn't really come out and say that in the manual here but if the ROPS is up then it's definitely going to do what it's designed to do which is keep it from actually rolling all the way over it'll tip on its side and it'll just kind of lay there right so if you are strapped in here then there's not really a chance for you to roll out and get crushed underneath something here but if the ROPS is down then it's not going to protect it from rolling over right so if that's the case i think anyways if you don't have a seatbelt on then you have a better chance of hopping off or quickly getting out of the way instead of being crushed by it as it rolls over on that note make sure you check out these safety videos about ballast weight okay these kinds of things are going to help keep you grounded keep you in place dualies wheel spacers liquid ballast rear ballast all sorts of stuff loading your loads low everything you can do to make sure that kind of situation does not occur you know, just when I thought I knew everything about trailering a tractor, you learn something new right here in the manual. Close fuel shutoff valve if your machine is equipped. Really? You got to turn the fuel off if you're going to transport your machine on a trailer? 
Additionally, okay, I hate this one. I hate even knowing this is in here and I don't know if I can follow the rules. <laughs> it says, position machine on trailer so the hood or engine cover opens from the rear of the trailer, okay? That means for most of these, you gotta put it on backwards. I really hate backing on uh, tractors onto trailers. I like to drive them on, I like to back them off. That's just what I like doing. What do you guys think? You gonna back them on or drive them forward? Okay, a couple interesting ones right in your loader manual. Pay attention now. We've talked about it before, but it becomes official now that we've located it in the manual, okay? So leveling in reverse. Say you're grading out a drive, something like that. Going in reverse, something like this, maybe a little more, maybe a little less, is about the maximum pitch that you want to have, the max maximum angle on your bucket there, okay? To avoid damage to the loader or bending the bucket cutting edge while leveling in reverse, position the bucket less than 40 degrees below level, okay? And when possible, put it in float. We've talked all about that. You guys know what that is. Now let's flip flop that. What about going forward, not in reverse? Leveling or scraping in forward. Okay, what you wanna do, you wanna have this bucket almost completely level or just slightly raised up to prevent that damage to the bucket edge there, to your cylinders, you know, to jamming something up. You never wanna go too fast either. And again, use float when possible. Now you know. Okay, now check this out. This is pretty sweet. And I'm gonna tell you, the R4 tires, that really common tread pattern, I don't think that that's gonna have this option here, but you get an ag tire like this, you see all these bolts right here, how this inner wheel, this plate here is really separate from the outer wheel or the rim right here. That gives you up to eight different rear wheel positions, okay? That is insane, okay? And, and think about this. I'm gonna flip over to the other page here. The narrowest position it shows on here is 51 inches wide, okay? And the widest position it shows on here is 75 inches wide. That is a two foot difference from, from narrowest to widest position. Now it does list an R4 tread pattern here. Let me show you. So maybe there is such a thing that exists and I just don't know about it. I don't know if you can see that or not, but it's right down in here. You can see the R4 tread pattern on there, but uh, check out your manual because no matter what you have, you're going to have at least more than one position. And that's going to really help some of you with um, that lateral stability that you need, which asked about it all the time. You know, I put dualies on my little 1025R there to help with that stability. I've talked about wheel spacers, all sorts of ways. So get yourself that uh, liquid ballast in here, everything you need to do in order to get that center of gravity down low and that width out wide to just make your tractor and your machine stable. But some of you, you need to have narrow or wide or different space in there to get in between rows or whatever the case might be. So pretty cool to know. Also on your front wheels as well, you're also gonna have an offset plate. So you'll be able to have a narrower stance or a wider stance, but it does say, note this, okay? You cannot use the loader uh, with the wheels in the wide position. Okay, so I gotta be honest, I don't like this one right here, but I still found it interesting because it is the opposite of what I do. And uh, that is removing material from a pile, okay? I know, I know, how can there be a problem with that, right? But approach and enter a pile with a level bucket, okay? Pretty straightforward. If the pile is high, remove the top first, okay? So you got your big pyramid shaped pile of dirt or stone or mulch or whatever it is. It's telling you if it's a high pile, I don't know how high high is, but if it's high, take the top off first. Well, first of all, you scoop into a, the top of a pile, it's just gonna push it off the other end, right? Part of the reason I like to go low is because it gives you something, a little backstop there. You know, you can push into it, scoop what you need out and pull it back. This is telling you to pull off the top first and I don't get that. So what do you guys do? Top, bottom, does it matter? And to be honest with you, I can't really figure out what the downside would be just to pull on the bottom of the pile. It's not like we're talking, it's a straight vertical pile here and if you pull the, the bottom out, the top's gonna collapse down on you. You know, a natural pile of dirt is gonna be kind of a, a pyramidal shape, you know, or a triangular, triangular shape with a tapered side slope going this way where you're not just gonna collapse everything in on you, right? Am I forgetting something here? Am I missing something? What's going on? Well, those are 10 fascinating pieces of information I found buried inside our owner's manuals. What gems have you found that are hidden? Share those below. Make sure you leave a comment. Give me a thumbs up, give me a thumbs down. If you haven't done so yet, hit that subscribe button right underneath the video. Make sure you read through the description as well. A lot of useful links down there, places to get 5% off with discount code GWT. Check out the other videos on the channel and until next time, stay safe. We'll see you soon.